Test run, test run. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, BVA. Yesterday, Thursday, it was a very important day in the House of Assembly in the British Virgin Islands. I don't know how many of you out there were able to listen to the debate or the conversation that went on in the House of Assembly. But it troubled me because I listen. I listen all day listening and trying to understand and make sense out of what was being said in the House of Assembly. I listened to my great premier. I listened to the deputy premier and I listened to Julian Fraser. All debate an issue, an issue that is very important to the people of this territory going forward. One of the most important debates right now. It parallels that of the cruise ship debate a few years ago, that of Wickham Ski development a few years before that, and even back in the 40s and 50s when the BVI was contemplating trying to get the legislature back, trying to get a constitution back in place, trying to have a governor station in the BVI versus having to send the representative them to Antigua for representation. These are all important time in our history, ladies and gentlemen. I know going forward, this government is selling an idea, an ideology that because of what took place last year during those storms, and they were bad storms, they were terrible storms, they put this country backwards, yes. It put us in a situation where we really is on the edge now. We have to figure out what to do. And the only way forward is to try to obtain some money so the government from the government side can start to rebuild, can put some of the infrastructure back in place. Those are all things that are necessary. We know, I know that. I, nobody is, is uh, naive to those facts. I think the biggest problem we have in right now going forward is a process and a method in which you're trying to obtain funds. And the information that's being shared and how it's being shared and why is it important that we all understand the end result. When we borrow, it's just like you going to the bank or going to borrow money from somebody. There's consequences. This is elevated to a whole different level another set of issues and concerns that we need to be concerned about. So ladies and gentlemen, it ain't easy. So today, this morning, I woke up and I tell you, I had to say something. You know, people are telling me all the time they ain't hearing from me. They ain't hearing from me because I don't want to criticize anything that's taking place if it makes sense and we have to try to do it to get, you know, balance back into the country, to bring it back, to, to continue to move the country forward in a very progressive and stable way. But it troubled me, ladies and gentlemen, it troubled me to see my premier, Dr. Orlando Smith, running this country and running the government like a mob-style government. That's what I saw yesterday in the House of Assembly. I saw the mob, the gangsters, them, come into the House of Assembly. Think about all the problems and the behavior and the way the mobsters and the gangsters them operate. That's what we saw yesterday. We saw a Dr. Smith that came to the House from since November or last year sometime. He was negotiating on behalf of the people of the territory without his team, without the people who can advise him properly. He had some advisors, you know, but it ain't. It wasn't you nor I. It was others who want good things. They want the BVI to progress, but at the same time, there's also other things that are blended in that they're going to benefit from. And it's really about them. It ain't about us, the people. Yes, I said Dr. Smith operating like a gangster, a real gangster, to come in the House of Assembly and tell a representative, the information that I need you to debate 
is there, but it ain't none of your business. But I want you to debate it and give me your support because at the end of the day, it's going to be good. That's what gangsters do. Gangsters walk in your business and tell you, pay up because we are going to give you protection that you really didn't need. But you will be protected. That's what gangsters do. Yes, Dr. Smith office, Dr. Smith government is running like gangsters. Ain't no two ways about it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't think that this debate is any different from Wickham Ski Development debate. Just think about that for a second. Laverty Stout was credited for being a godfather of the BVI. And he did a wonderful job. He did great for this territory. He made some mistakes along the way. Wickham Ski was one of them. It was under the Laverty Stout administration that Wickham Ski was given away to Bates Hill. And it was a few people on the street that found out about it and were able to make enough noise so the UK, the United Kingdom government, can take a hard look and say, let's stop where we are. Let's do something to save the people of the territory. Just imagine today if Anigata was privately owned by an organization. A gangster organization, that's what BTLM was. Gangsterism in the BVI. Today, today, Wickham Ski now is a thriving business community. Most of the businesses over there are locally owned and operated. The same people, some of them who didn't come forward, who didn't come front in the front of the debate, who didn't come to help fight the issue, are the ones benefiting. This is the same thing we have going on right now. Move forward from Bates Hill. Think about Lavit, think about Willard Wheatley. Here's a man who said to the people of the territory, despite all of your hardship, Despite how bad the economy was in the territory, get rid of the welfare check that you were getting from England because at the end of the day, you're going to be better off fighting, working hard for what you want, putting it to better use. If you continue in a manner where you continue to take welfare, you're going to always be a dependent and never be independent. I believe that was Willard Wheatley approach. Look at what's happening in the BVI. All of those men and women who put forward those type of ideas and, and, and were able to accomplish some of those things. Today, we BVI landers, you BVI landers who got, got wealth, are living off of that. You're living off of the same people who put forth, who sacrificed themselves and their lives for you. Some of you that probably didn't even know we're going to raise up to be where you are today. We have the same debate going on right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing ain't no joke. This is serious. Yes, we need money. And that's the bottom line. But it's how you get it and what it comes with. will determine what happens to this BVI in the next 10 to 15 to 20 years. Think about you who got and you who want to preserve for your younger ones them. Think about that. If you don't put safeguards in place, they ain't going to own nothing. They're not going to have nothing. So this ain't no different. Don't support nothing that this premier is pushing forward when he has secret deals, when he has secret conversation, and he's supposed to come to the House of Assembly. The House of Assembly is the only refuge that the people them have it's the only way the people them know what's going on. And here he is coming to the house, asking the legislators them to debate something that they have no knowledge of. And all of them talking about in committee stage. No, foolishness. This is the same campaign ploy they ran on you guys in 2011, in 2007. The same approach. The big billboards. The conversation, the blanking out of media, they calling you stupid and dumb. Oh, you're not a supporter. You're brilliant walls and not bridges. Nonsense. I'm going to get to the bridge thing. The comment that Kedrick made yesterday also. But I want to touch the premier. The premier is a 
gangster. Running the country in a gangsterism manner. That's what he did. Think about it. You don't have to agree with me, but that's the facts. It's right there in the papers, them. Thank God for the newspapers, them, and the reporters, them, who could put things verbatim. Information being negotiated between heads of states. So the people them in the back and the bottom are not allowed to examine the information. But yet you're asking them to approve something that they don't know anything about. Nonsense. More to come on the premier and his government, the NDP government, and the manner in which they're running the country. I'm going to touch a little bit about Kedrick Pickering. Dr. Pickering, I heard you. I heard you in your little talk. I heard you when you said between sleep and awake. You embarrass yourself. If you had stayed awake the entire movie that you went to watch, you would have understand that the bridge, the bridge that the guy was speaking about was the fact that they had technology and knowledge and information that could help societies outside of their own dwelling. The knowledge and information that they were hiding and deceiving, that's what the movie was about. It was about here's a society, a black society in Africa. Remember, it wasn't, it was Africa wasn't just that society, you know. It was big. But they were privileged to have advanced knowledge of what was happening in the world. They had technology that nobody else had. The world was developed. You had all the other places in the world. You had China, Hong Kong, you had England, you had America. But they had enough to share with the brothers and sisters and that's what the other guy came back and said you have what we need to make a change in the world black people he said around the world can use this technology to advance themselves and this guy the king the new king the one that went to speak to the united nation the king the bridge he spoke about he was speaking about himself he was speaking about sharing the knowledge and understanding that they had. They were hiding for so long that he wanted to share that now with the rest of the world. Not just black people, but the world. Because imagine you have advanced medicine or ways to treat people who are sick and you're keeping it to yourself. It's the same thing going on here right now. You negotiating your government. You and Dr. Smith negotiating a way forward to help the people of this territory. But yet you hide in the information where the rest of us, where the rest of us can benefit from it and put in our input. You're hiding that from us. You're keeping that from us and you're telling us to trust you blindly. Nonsense. That's the same thing I did in 2011, and a lot of people believe in it. The billboards and were so blinded that people didn't see the garbage behind them. And this is where we are now. And here we are again and again and again. Major development opportunities, major focus on going forward where our people them could benefit. Imagine. And you're all up and down on the radio and telling people that you're the ones who put things in place and presented this to the United Kingdom. You put things in place to kill yourself and your own people? To fix a road? Two point something miles of road? You borrowing money, 60 something million dollars and got paid back 90 million? Wow. You borrowing money to pay consultant to hire other consultants to consult with consultants? Come on. Something ain't right. So, Dr. Pickering, you need to watch the movie again. This time, stay awake. Because the movie is powerful. And it mirrors everything that's going on here in this country and throughout the world in the black world. In the black world. It mirrors it. Go pay attention. Maybe my analogy is wrong, but that's how I saw it. That bridge was about sharing knowledge and information, bringing other black people into the norm, educating them, helping them to progress, teaching them the things that they didn't already know. These guys had it. 
they had the knowledge and they weren't sharing it. That's why it was a book. More to come, ladies and gentlemen. I feel compelled to say something and something needs to be said and I did it and I'm on do more. More to come.